Okay, hello. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> the offending orange juice. Um, perhaps we'll just get started. It was, um, this is a slightly more informal um, talk. Uh, uh, technically, it should be a, a gallery talk, but we, uh, we've crammed the gallery so full that it would be impossible, I think, to have any kind of talk in there. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is uh, Shimon Basai. I'm co-curator of uh, Can Buildings Curate. Um, and I teach here at the Architectural Association. Um, I'd like to welcome you all this evening. Um, also, those of you who are here for that show and all of the other smorgasbord uh, of exhibitions that I think one uh, uh, commentator called it this evening. Um, I'm here to uh, introduce Philippe Ram from uh, the architectural uh, firm of Decos de Um Some sort of obligatory data that one feels one always has to uh, uh, spell out in these things. Um, Philippe studied architecture at the Swiss Federal Polytechnic um, School in Zurich and in Lausanne. He's exhibited in Europe and uh, in America. He's uh, at various exhibitions and biennales at uh, Archilab 2000, San Francisco MoMA, at Mori, FRAC, and at Pompidou. In 2003, Degastel and Ram represented Switzerland at the Architecture Biennale. Um, some of you who would have gone to that Biennale, I'm sure will remember that. Uh, it was a particularly memorable um, installation that, um, that deoxygenated the space by 8%, making it the same uh, climatic density as it is at the top of the Swiss Alps. Um, I, must, I asked a rhetorical question, why have we put um, Philippe and uh, Jean-Gilles in the exhibition with the recently opened um, Mac Lucy McIntosh Gallery in Lausanne? Um, the answer has something to do with the idea of uh, ecology. Um, first off, the gallery. The gallery is an ecology. The gallery is an ecology that's a construct of abstract and of concrete aspects. Its whiteness, its sterility, its obsession with hygiene, its silence, the way in which it keeps out certain clamor and cacophony of the real world, so on and so forth. All of these things create an ecology, which is what we call the modern white gallery. In a similar way, I would argue that Philippe Rahm's work also deals with ecology. They deal with the invisibilities of space. They deal with climate, with temperature, with humidity. And the effects, effects that these things have upon our bodies, or what you might call a physiological architecture. At the beginning of the last series of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Buffy was brought back to life against her will by her friends. Now, I often imagined what was that space, what was the heaven that Buffy was dwelling with in, at the end of series five, five to the beginning of series six? I really don't know the answer to that question, but I have always imagined it would make a perfect brief for, the, for Decos de Ram, and I'd be very interested to see what Philippe would come up with. So I'd like to welcome Philippe Ram. Okay. Thank you uh, very much for uh, the invitation here in uh, the A school. Uh, it's very famous for me. Uh, it's a mythic school for me uh, when I was a student. And um, so I will show the, the work. Maybe it will be not a complete uh, lecture. So it will be more um, a presentation of some project. And, um, and so we, you will maybe understand uh, the way I have to, to do uh, architecture, to understand architecture, because I think uh, my work is not only um, it's a vision of arch architecture, but it, it is also based on the architecture of today, of the quality of the space of today. Um, so we, we try to understand the quality of, uh, of the space, and we would like to to distort or to, under, to get inside the, the space and the time and the, and the wavelengths, uh, the spectrum of the light, and we want to, to deconstruct maybe the, the homogeneity of the, of the space to understand really what is it and what is the new element of architecture of today. 
the, the first uh, project, it will uh, kind of uh, entrance into the spectrality of the light, uh, like uh, spectral distortion. Um, one first project, it, is, it was a um, scenography for an exhibition in Paris. It is, we, we try uh, very often to do this project. We don't do the best, uh, uh, the best presentation for this project, so we, but we keep this project in uh, our pocket, huh, I think. And uh, so the, 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 this project, it was, uh, the idea it was to travel, not in the space, but in the wavelengths of the light. It's, it's a kind of uh, uh, motionless uh, travel, uh, like a journey into the, the no movement space, and just travel into the, sp the different wavelengths of the, of the light. Um, so the, the travel, it is from the visible to the invisible, uh, from uh, the red to the ultraviolet, and, um, and from the inhabitants to the non-life non possible uh, habitant space. Uh, so the, the project, the scenography was like uh, five uh, rooms. The first room, it was like a white room. The, it is from the right. Uh, it is a room with all the color of the wavelengths, uh, all the wavelengths of the spectrum of the light, of the visible light from the purple to the red, and all the color together create uh, the white, the white color. And so it was uh, like, an, um, like a natural uh, light environment. And after this first room, we go uh, to the other room and we erase uh, the red the red and so it was just green and purple and uh, yellow uh, so it was just a travel from uh, if we take this from 700 nanometer we go to 600 nanometer it's like a travel in the wavelengths of the light and after this we go in the purple uh, room so it was a monochromatic uh, room at uh, Five, uh, four, uh, 400 uh, nanometer, and when we are in this room, we leave, we left, um, we leave the, the visible uh, space, and we entrance into the invisible space, and so uh, the 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 um, the, the next uh, room is into the ultraviolet A. Uh, so you don't see anymore; you see nothing, but uh, the mediative. Uh, um, the reception of the space uh, stopped to be in the visible into with the eyes, but it go to the skin, and so it tan the skin, the UVA. And the last, and the last room, it was this one, and uh, it was uh, impossible to go inside this room because it was too small. But also there is ultraviolet C, uh, and it is very dangerous uh, ray, uh, ray. It destroy all the cell of the skin and all the virus and bacteria. And so it's just just a kind of travel into the into the wavelengths from something very cool, or very very normal, to something uh, very dangerous and very uh, uh, impossible to live in. Another project, it was uh, um, like a prototype of uh, an apartment. Uh, it was due in uh, Japan, in CCA of Kitakyushu, in the south of uh, Japan. And we also published a book about this project. Uh, the project, it was to, to create uh, one flat, one apartment, and not in the space. Uh, with, we take the program like the bedroom, the bathroom, and the living room. But we don't uh, create here the bathroom, here the living room, here the bedroom, and the corridor or to 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 link all the all the room. But we we decide to create the different room inside different wavelengths of the light, inside the different spectrum of the light. So we put all the room together in the same place, and so uh, in in the infra in the ultraviolet at three three uh, hundred nanometer it was the bathroom, the bed the bedroom the bedroom at uh, in the blue and the living room at eight hundred nanometer. So all the room was together, but it was painted with different color and. Uh, and when, when we light on 
one color, for example, we light the blue, we just see the blue uh, uh, furnitures and the blue space, and so we see the bed and uh, all this, the furniture with the bed. And here you could just see like a ghost object, uh, like a cushion of the living room or like a small uh, um, tabouret for uh, like a bad room, uh, for bad uh, in, in Japan. And so it was uh, the living room and you see the carpet and you see uh, other uh, object from the other uh, room. And here in the, in the ultraviolet you see the, the, the bathroom. So the other, pro uh, the other room disappear into the black uh, ground when it is not light on. Uh, we do for this project, we, we do a book with uh, Marie Dariussec, a French writer who writes a kind of uh, fiction about living in this space and two persons live together in the same place but not in the same time and not in the same color. So it was maybe, it was like uh, six, uh, 16, 60 uh, square meter into 20 square meter. Uh, it is a uh, project, but I think I will not show it, but it is a uh, one important project for us. It was a um, project about um, a sport, uh, Omnisport Hall in, in Switzerland. And uh, yes, there is a, a small movie. It, it, it is about a uh, relationship between the body, uh, the air, the respiration, the perspiration, the breath, and uh, and all the, the different, uh, different uh, movement of the air and from the inside the, inside the air. Okay. Uh, another project, it is uh, the pavillon, the Swiss pami uh, pavillon for uh, the Venice Biennale in uh, 2002. Um, in in uh, this project, it was also like a distortion of uh, of maybe of altitude. It was like we create uh, all the, we take the parameter of the physical uh, world of at three thousand altitude meter altitude, like in high mountain, and we er we compress this parameter into the sea level uh, in Venice. And, uh, and so we just keep uh, two physical parameters. We keep the parameter of, uh, of, the, of the air. So we reduce the level of oxygen of uh, 21 degrees, uh, like it is 21% uh, when it is air, for example. We reduce to 14% like it is at uh, 3,000 meters. And, uh, and also we increase the level of, um, of the light with a very bright light, a white light at 10,000 uh, lux. Uh, and so it, it was a little like the reflection of uh, the light on the snow uh, in, uh, in the mountain. And so it was not a symbolic representation of the, of the mountain, not a visual representation of the mountain, but more a physiological representation of the mountain. And, and the other interest of this was that we only work on into immaterial in uh, things like air and, uh, and light, so not, uh, not uh, hard uh, surface. And when we act just like this, we understand that the, uh, the reception of, the, um, of this architecture is no more in, inside the visible, and no more with the eyes, but with um, with, um, with inside the body with hormonal uh, reaction. For example, the low level of oxygen create a response of uh, erythropoietin. It is one hormone inside the blood that, that uh, creates cell, uh, red cell, multiply the red cell inside the body, and so it give more oxygen to all the muscle and the organ inside the, inside the body. And so it give more, uh, more potential uh, Activity and also when we we when we raise the uh, with a very bright light, uh, we stop the secretion of the melatonin. It is also another hormone in, inside the body, 
And so it was like a doping space, like a stimulating uh, space, but it was only with an uh, invisible uh, uh, aspect. And in fact, it is like in, when you go in, in, into the high mountain, you have this uh, physiological uh, reaction of the body. And it is, it is why some sport player go to, tr to, to, to do some exercise in, inside the high mountain. We choose, for example, here we choose a plexiglass for the for the um, the ground because we want to we use a fluorescent tube with a spectrum of the of the sunlight and in this uh, tube it, there is also ultraviolet and so uh, the plexiglass let the ultraviolet ray to tan the skin so we, because the the glass block the ultraviolet. And the other, the, the, other uh, the third aspect, it was when you entrance, because it was uh, very complicated to create this space with a lot of uh, control to, to do this. And when you, you go inside uh, the space, it was really white and you lose all the limit of the space. So uh, you have the feeling to float into, into, the, into the space. Um, just a project about um, uh, just a project about um, a cafe in in France. Uh, um, we show. So for this project, it was uh, we just take uh, the first level uh, of uh, of the idea of the cafeteria, and the cafeteria is a place where you take uh, drink because you lose uh, water during one day. You lose three liter of uh, of water during one day, and so you have to bring uh, again this uh, water. And so maybe it is a very low level of uh, the idea of the cafeteria. And so we take this first idea of the cafeteria, and we don't want that it is only one simple act to drink the water, but we would like to to specialization to specialize uh, the function of the cafeteria, so to create a, like a, a rehydration space, and uh, and so we 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 produce. Uh, we produce uh, a kind of a variation of the uh, of the level of uh, the humi relative humidity inside the space, and it changed from uh, uh, from uh, six, seventy uh, percent of relative humidity during the winter to maybe ninety five uh, percent during the win the summer, and so. Uh, this va this gas of water in the it is invisible gas it is not wet uh, you don't uh, you are not uh, inside uh, because it's not it's not particle of uh, of um, is, uh, of uh, water it is only gas of uh, water and so this gas of water give <coughs> back the the um, film the hydrolipid film in, of the skin uh, so it's it's give what the action you do when you drink uh, water, you, you have also from outside the body. Okay, so it's just, um, just a small film about this and, and just the floor, the, the, what, the vapor of water come from the floor and there is just a movement of the, of the, um, movement of the of the ground that go more deeper into the in, into the water into the gas and uh, you could be more higher and so you 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 could choose the place you want inside the inside the cafeteria and it, it is a competition we win uh, at the end of last year and so we we i hope we will begin very soon to build it it, it is in, uh, in Saint-Germain-des-Prés, in the school uh, of uh, Beaux-Arts in Paris.
And also just uh, for the roof, we just uh, use a prism of uh, water, and so it, it creates some, uh, some, uh, some uh, arc-en-ciel so, uh, inside, the, inside the space. And it cools also the, the space uh, with, uh, with uh, cold water inside. Uh, a project we do some project with also with the question of um, of temperature because with the modernity uh, uh, we have now a kind of uh, uh, global uh, uh, heat inside the space because the heat you have is at 21 degree during all the years and uh, and, the, and this heat, it is, also, it is the heat for the body, it is also the heat that you, the temperature that you breath. And, uh, and we would like to, to work like a meteorological uh, work on the question of, uh, of the temperature inside the space. Uh, this is just a project we do in Seville, in uh, Spain, for an exhibition. It was a kind of uh, river cinema. It is an um, idea to lose information uh, rather than to get it. And uh, so it is a, uh, when there is a beamer, there is a light from the beamer that come to the screen and the screen go to you and give to you a, a ray and you absorb it like a receptor. And in this project, we would like to change the sense of the, of the direction of uh, the of the information and that we begin to be the beamer and uh, the screen begin to be the reception. And so for this, we, uh, we produce a ray not in the visible but in the infrared uh, because uh, uh, just after the visible. And so if there is a cold surface and an hot surface, uh, there is always, always uh, a radiation from the hot to the cold. And so we freeze one black uh, screen uh, matte black screen at two degrees and so it begin, begin to be uh, like an absorb uh, situation and so you, you, you begin to lose information rather than to get it. Uh, the project we show here uh, it is um, also to, to work with the question of temperature and we say maybe it's, uh, we don't have to live all the way at 21 degrees. Maybe 21 degrees it is when you are uh, sitting and you are walking, you need maybe this. And so we produce what we want to, to, to create a space with, um, uh, in this space, the furniture, the space and the function and the climatic system are together at one and not separate into three order, but they are all together. And so uh, we create, for example, here it is a space with more density of the tube of uh, hot water inside the tube and it creates some uh, 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 more private space and more hot space and it is for working for, the, for, the, for Lucy McIntosh, the owner of the gallery. And when you are walking, if you want to visit just the exhibition, you are uh, walking and you produce your own energy, so you don't need 21 degrees, and so you could be in, in, into a six, 16 uh, degree, for example, or, or 18 degree. And so, and so it is uh, the, uh, it is this, uh, this other element. So all the space are bring together and, and, the, and the tube uh, create the def, def, define the different space and the different temperature. And uh, f at the end we, we built, um, uh, it was a more, more simple project and we, you could so see one uh, photo. It was also a question of temperature but we, we decide to, to, to to do something uh, like uh, not uh, an object, but ju just a ground, and so it will, it is just a heat ground during the winter and a cold ground, cold uh, cold surface during the, the summer. And so here it is just a, actually an exhibition I do in uh, 
in the Centre Cultural Suisse, Swiss Institute in Paris, and uh, so it is the same, uh, same project uh, for, to give it at uh, different uh, situations. Uh, just a new project about time, and uh, it, it is also an idea that today, um, today there is a kind of global and uh, also um, permanent uh, situation because we always live uh, into a kind of uh, sp uh, spring because it is 21 degrees, it is like an eternal spring. And when we are here, we are 21, and we take a car, and we are 21, and we go to the airport, and we are in t 21 degrees, and we take the fly, and we're in, in the other country, in Singapore, it is also always 21. And so there is this kind of net of 21 degrees uh, that is like, a, like a an eternal spring, like the golden age uh, in the myth Greek mythology. Or, and it is also uh, a permanent uh, light and also a permanent uh, level of humidity. And, uh, and uh, this situation begins to be more and more uh, important with the globalization and also with uh, the, uh, the distortion of the climatic uh, uh, system because there is this warm up of the climate and the planet begins to be more and more hot, maybe. And so the, the, the space for humans begins to be more and more disconnected by, from the natural uh, rhythm. And we could see uh, it is not, it is not a utopic uh, vision, it is really a very pragmatic vision of the, of the thing. And also, I just talk uh, of this today, but also actually the best ecological house, it is not a house that has a lot of contact with the outside, it is a house very close inside because uh, you have to control the temperature and, and so you don't have to open the window because if you open the window you have a lot of cold air that go inside so you have to be all the way inside the closed uh, house and to control really the, the level and so this is the best uh, house today to, for ecological reason and so it, it begins to be like a, a very uh, ex extract uh, environment from the natural uh, environment, and and so for, for uh, we and so with this idea, uh, we think that today maybe one charge of uh, architecture it is to create space, but maybe also to create time because when uh, when you you are in this perpetual spring, you could also decide that architecture could create also time and so you want to create winter and uh, you want to create other season and, and live in other uh, climate and so um, uh, for uh, for the exhibition in Paris uh, in the courtyard of the of the building uh, we create it was the opening was the, the 10 March and we create the, the, the intensity of the light of the 15 May so we, when there is, a, because the sunset is earlier during the winter, and so we have some, uh, some, um, we have all the data of the level of intensity of the light at each hour of the of the 15 uh, May, and so when when it is uh, when it is uh, not so high during uh, in March in April, we have artificial light that compounds the level of intensity of the light and so it creates all the way uh, at, uh, at uh, 9 uh, and, and 14 p.m. it creates all the way the sun set at this time. And so it was this uh, situation with the two uh, software that control the light and bring and give to this space always like uh, 15 May. And so when you go inside the space you are like in the light of of the real light of Paris into the 15 May, and uh, so it is. So this idea it is like a journey into the future because the opening was in March, and so you go here and you live inside the future uh, day. And it's also it it's, uh, it was a uh, it was um, a perversion also for the tree because the tree are connected. The leaf of the tree are connected with the duration of the day, and so. Uh, there is some flower that come uh, two months before than uh, in other place in Paris. 
So it was also another project we do. Uh, we don't do uh, it, uh, but it was to also to 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 wrong to to do to give the wrong information to plants that and plant things that the the summer stay all the all the years. And it is uh, we will uh, realize this project in uh, Austria uh, on an island in uh, on a, ri a river in Austria. And the project it is to create like a, like a clairière, like a hole in the forest, uh, like a second summer or perpetual summer. And so we have the same system of the light of the of the we create we take the 21 June light. Uh, Uh, and we create uh, always at the same hour of the 21 June, we create always the sunset at this uh, time and the sunrise as, as, uh, because uh, the 21 June it is the longest uh, day of the year. And so the tree uh, and all the plants of the, of the forest think uh, because it's hormonal, uh, um, it's an ornamental system inside the plant and they think it, the summer is still uh, here and so they don't lose the leaf, they, they keep, they stay in, inside this uh, perpetual summer and so it, uh, the idea is to, to create this strange uh, time, strange season in, inside the winter, for inside the autumn, in the winter and so it, it's, uh, it's like, for example, it is still the day of the 21 June and it is the night uh, from the 21 uh, December, for example. And, uh, and so it, is, it will be not really a summer, but it will be a kind of uh, a perverted summer that goes through the, the years. Uh, and uh, also we, put, we will put inside the ground uh, a net of uh, hot water that that uh, block the, um, the freeze of the, of, the, of the ground. And the uh, last project, it is a uh, four, four house we will build for a French artist called uh, Fabrice Hibert. And uh, it is also uh, idea to create some time, but also some jet lag. And so, um, uh, Because when you are at 21 degrees in winter in France, for example, it is the same temperature in real time than uh, at, the, at the north of uh, Africa. So it is, you could imagine that when you open the door of your own house uh, during the winter, it is like an instant travel to the south, uh, to the north of Africa uh, for the temperature. And so we take this idea and we, we We augment, uh, we augment the, the it, is la, at, it is an underground plan at the uh, right and it is like a radiator and tube, two radiator and one tube, but it, the radiator uh, takes some place and uh, space and, uh, and it comes inside the space, the living space, at, uh, like before the window there is this small radiator and here it begins to be a very big uh, space. And in this, uh, and in this, in this uh, space, we put uh, plant humidity, wavelengths, light from uh, Jericho, for example, here. And so it we, and also the rhythm, uh, the clock of uh, this uh, this place. And so we will see a last film. It is. Uh, And so it was like uh, the beta version of the project. And so, uh, and so the pro this project uh, was to bring, uh, it was called Winter House. And so uh, it's the temperature in France, in Vendée, And so it's cold during the winter and hot during the summer. And in Tahiti, in the South Hemisphere, 
it is the inverse because we are in south hemisphere and, and France is in north hemisphere, so you have the winter during the summer. And, uh, and also in uh, Tahiti, the temperature are always like an eternal spring. It's always at 21 or more, but it's never too cold or too hot. And so we take this parameter inside the, the house, this temperature parameter inside this house, and also uh, we take the, the intensity of the light uh, in, uh, also because in the north hemisphere, uh, at the latitude of, uh, of the France, uh, the first, it is like, uh, it is very, the light is very bright during the summer and it go down, it is a graphic at the left, it go down during the winter. And so there is some reaction also with the melatonin and some hormonal system and, and and for example, we work with uh, one specialist of this, and there is this idea of the seasonal affective disorder, the SAD, because maybe there is a relationship between the intensity of the light and uh, the diminution of the light during the fall, and that maybe uh, block, don't block the melatonin, uh, the hormone melatonin during the day, and so you have still a uh, little melatonin during the day, and this melatonin gives to you maybe uh, small information, you are a little tired or you are a little, and so maybe you are not so well during the, and, and, um, and so uh, some, sp some scientific are working today on, on this relationship between the mood and uh, melatonin, and uh, maybe uh, they, there is this uh, relationship with the light, and uh, and so we take the light of Tahiti, and in Tahiti it is a right uh, graphic, and you could see it is all the way, uh, it is not so uh, different between summer and winter. And so we create, we take also this intensity of the wavelengths of the, of the light inside the, inside the house. And so we take all these parameters and we put inside the house in Vendée, all the parameters of Tahiti, and we take inside the house in Vendée and we create in real time the climate of, of Tahiti, the season of Tahiti, the humidity of Tahiti, uh, the intensity of Tahiti with the sunrise and sunset. And, sunset. and here we could, we could follow the travel of uh, the air. And the construction of uh, this house will be a very ecological construction, very like um, I, I, I just say just before, like very, uh, very uh, with a very big isolation of uh, 30 centimeter of uh, of full of uh, of glass. But I don't know. And uh, and so we go inside this uh, this uh, space. This. Um, uh, technical space uh, and we produce the air, we grow up if the, uh, if the air is at 5 degrees, uh, we, we, we raise the 5 degrees of the temperature of the air to 21 and, uh, and we put this air into this uh, humid atmosphere with a plant of Tahiti, with a flower of Tahiti and there is all the light that creates the intensity of the of the light of Tahiti and with the sunset and the sunrise. And so it, this space is not a living space, it's, it's more like a technique uh, space technique room. And so this is a sunset. <coughs> and the air are pre, pre warm to 21 degrees or more, it changed during the season and with a smell of the plant and with the humidity and it is uh, it is thrown into the living space and the living space it's very uh, uh, 
basic modern space uh, in concrete or very And the quality of the space <coughs> is maybe more by the wavelength of the light and uh, the quality of the air. Okay, thank you. Would um, perhaps we would take uh, maybe one or two questions uh, for Philippe uh, while you're uh, ruminating uh, your razor sharp minds to uh, interrogate Philippe with some incisive questions. Uh, perhaps I could put it to you that. Um, I find that, with, particularly with your art, some of the art installations, you use the, uh, the installation as a sort of vehicle to often explore um, the sort of almost pathological um, aspects of, of space. That's interesting in the sense that architecture is generally, uh, you know, the sort of foundations of architecture is that which shelters us um, from, uh, from the elements, from the things that, as it were, do harm to us whether it's excessive rain, excessive cold, excessive heat, and so on and so forth, um, you negate that. It's as though you take, often with those installations, um, there's an excess of light, there's a deprivation of oxygen, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm wondering where this interest in the pathology of, of kind of space comes in, and how the, what the implications are for, a, for an architecture that's based on, on, on a sort of pathology almost. Yes, I, I, uh, yes, I, I think the, the, um, uh, it's not really a pathology. It's more maybe the modern space is pathologic. Uh, we, and so we, we begin maybe at the 19th century uh, when, the, when we, we put uh, gas light in the, inside the city and so we transform the, the night of the city into the day of the city. And so uh, it is the same, uh, yes, uh, when you read some Jules Verne novel or, or, uh, or Villiers de Ladon, uh, from a writer from the 19th century, it was really like a revolution, like a heretic revolution of, uh, to transform the, 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 the night into the, the, the day. And I think uh, all the elements uh, we, we work on, on are not, uh, are inside, but it is more hide, hide inside the, the space and we, want to ignore or we don't want to, to see it because, uh, for example, when you read uh, there is a history of uh, Alain Corbin, it's a French uh, historian, he, he spoke about the smell the, in the history and he said, for example, the city during, uh, before uh, the 18th century was terribly uh, smelled very bad, uh, but when you see image of uh, the city, it was always very nice growing from the Beaux-Arts school and you have the feeling that there is a very nice harmony 
And in fact, when you go inside this building, it was terribly, the smell was terribly, terribly bad. And, and so uh, one origin also of uh, the modernity was to transform this, the smell of the city and to, to, give, uh, to give air inside the city. And so I, I think, yes, the visible are very often very more simple to, to work on. And also, I think today we have the more and more uh, the possibility to work inside this uh, in, inside this uh, aspect of the thing. And so, um, uh, so I for 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 us, gallery and museum, it was also a space to to work with this element uh, um, because uh, uh, yes, it, because we were invited uh, and we use this uh, place to to develop a new approach and new possibility to work on space. Mm. Over here, could you? I'm really worried about the architecture, actually, because I think as I see it... Sorry, could you just wait for the microphone? One minute, please. <laughs> I'm really worried about the architecture, because as I see, you are creating very sterile environment. Take, for instance, the Taiji house. Yeah, you are creating the right temperature, the right plants, and so on. What about the songs of birds, the sound of the waves slapping on the shores, and so on? What do you do with those? But I think when you, when you use a uh, normal radiator, it's the same question. Why you uh, use only hot water in, inside it and not the bird? Uh, not the so we just add one element more than this simple radiator. So you, you, if I can continue about the birds, yeah, you are creating mm -hmm. a perpetual space, a spring in Paris, for instance. What mm -hmm. happened to the blackbirds, for instance? They'll be completely confused. Yeah. They, they don't know what to do if you have spring all the time. Yeah. So what are you going to do with them? No, but uh, you, you know, I understand you. Uh, I think it's not so, it's not so, maybe sometimes it's not very beautiful or very, uh, space. It could be very anxious uh, space. But I think, uh, um, I think this, uh, for example, uh, the, this closed house, the, the, the fact that we have to close more and more the house uh, on itself. It is, uh, today it will be more and more a question of ecology and uh, to, to, to keep uh, energy and we have to, with a new level of uh, like uh, minergy in Switzerland, we have to block and to control all the, the renewal of the air. And so, uh, these parameters are bring by the by the modernity, by the globalization, by the uh, heat, uh, reheating of the planet, and so uh, we. And now we have to uh, understand your your um, your uh, what you're afraid, and I think we have. But we have to work with this, and maybe to 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 open it to burn. Perhaps we'll take one more question. Irene, surely. Okay. <laughs> it's been itching all, all the way through, I know. Um, I mean, I, I must say, I find the connection between architecture and physiology, which you make, really interesting. And um, also the connection which you have made in the context, I think, of Venice with medicine. I mean, I think I had never heard this before, at least in the recent past. And um, see. What I, I am wondering, and in a way it touched in a funny way to, uh, with, it has a relationship with the last question, is why actually stop to um, this environment which are in effect quite clean and in a way sedate. And so it's a, it's a parallel which comes to my mind is with environment in the 60s where if you had an environment like say the pavilion in Venice, um, you would be expected to come there with a joint or maybe harder drugs. And why actually limit the artificiality of the spaces to where you do and not go beyond, for instance, in the way you simulate Tahiti using all kinds of other means besides light t and temperature? Um, yes, you, speak of, you ask about what is the limit of this or what. It, uh, um, yes, I, I don't understand well the question, but I think um, I think, uh, uh, for example, there is a um, yes at uh, um, at in at the end of the ninety, uh, uh, for example, there is a new light like um, like uh, economic light, artificial light, 
And in fact, in this um, in this slide, it was a poor web, a poor spectrum of light. It was only two peak, two two eye, and two two color, and all the other color doesn't exist, don't exist. And so, in fact, it was not very good for the eyes, and it was uh, it give uh, uh, and uh, so I I think. Um, I think these elements are, uh, are maybe bring from the outside, and, and so we have to um, to work on it. And, after, and also, uh, so because maybe it, you will be because we have we know we have the knowledge to, to know what kind of effect this kind of light have, and we also know the effect to what when we breathe the air inside this space, and so it could no be longer be. Um, unknown. We know the quality of the air, what is the chemical substance of the air, and uh, maybe you could be poisoned by the, the air or by this. And so, uh, um, so uh, I think there is uh, maybe there is no limit. It is like uh, for a building, you could be built a very cheap building, very small, and you could build uh, one uh, one very big museum. So maybe you could build. Uh, like uh, uh, aphrodisiac space and, uh, and uh, non-FX uh, space or so far, I don't know. But I think also you, after you, you, you have the, the responsibility, the, the political responsibility and uh, ethic responsibility to make choice. And the choice is your responsibility. Thank you. I think that's yeah. probably a good point to end. Before I, I set you free, um, I'd just like to <laughs> use the opportunity to remind you that if you're around tomorrow evening, there's a performance debate by Drabble and Sachs and Issa Sturm, which starts at 7 o'clock um, in here. And then next Tuesday on the 3rd, there's a panel discussion um, uh, asking the question, can buildings curate, with Jens Hoffman, as if David Bertocchi and Sarah Herder from the storefront. Um, so I'd really like to thank uh, Philip Brown for his lecture this evening. Thank you.